What are you drinking there, Josh? I see a little pink lid. Yeah, I've missed the old uh, what are you drinking beginnings of these podcasts. Yeah, what are you drinking? I'm drinking, it's called Purple Rain. Ooh. It's a type of tea latte. It's a vanilla oh, okay. tea latte. It's not made of prints or anything. It's made of real prints. So they've got a limited number of those. Where is it from? Do you care though, really? I care. What? Because it's clearly not Starbucks and I don't recognize anything. No, so it's I would from like, like a place in Los Angeles. Well, obviously it's from a place in Los Angeles. You live in Los Angeles and you I have know, a coffee. I know, but like, you're not, are I you going to be coming here go anytime of- soon? Yeah. Are you going to get try out this tea latte from the Undergrind Cafe? The Undergrind Cafe? Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. And that's a pun. Yeah, it is. What is that again? You hate puns, was it? You know what? It depends on the pun. Coffee-related puns can be okay. Tea-related, in this case. Tea-related puns can be okay. And pet-related puns are okay to a point. I don't really like when they call it like, you know, when they're trying to adopt out pets and it's like, help them find their forever home. And they spell forever with fur. And it's like, oh, yeah. Okay. How about just write it properly? Yeah. Or all the meow puns. That people do yeah, a lot cats. of meow puns. Yeah, I could do without it. Unless it's in the name, then it's hilarious. I know you've been pretty busy recently, you told me. I, I was wondering what's going on with work and everything. Yeah, well, I don't need to give you too many details, as I generally don't. But I will say, I have been very, very busy. I, one, one day I had like three French tests in one day. As you may or may not know, I'm taking French courses right now, as well as teaching two Spanish courses. Oh, I thought that French people were just testing you. Yeah, that too. Yeah, random French people decided to test me. (laughs) But it was all online. And of course, my computer stopped working. Well, it kept freezing. And I was like, you know what, I should update it. So I updated my computer to the whatever some new operating system. It did the whole restarting thing. And then it would not turn back on. It was like past over 24 hours of that little bar trying to restart. And I was like, um, are you going to come back? Are you going to start over again? And it didn't. Did it come back eventually? It did not. So I, I mean, I did a whole thing. I went into like recovery mode and stuff, but oh. it also won't even let me, it won't even pair with the mouse anymore. So I have very limited, I'm just oh. using the keyboard. It's so stupid. It doesn't matter. That's tragic. I hope you get everything back. Well, you know, I'd like to get the stuff off there. That's why the picture last yeah. week for the, for our podcast was one I was I was like, I don't want that picture of me. You wanted to use like an official picture. And I put up one that I took of my computer. I wanted a picture. Yeah, I I looked really gross in that picture. I mean, great. I uh, shut up. You always look great. And you're no, 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 no. Don't do this. This isn't what I wanted. You know, everyone's very hyper. No, stop it. Stop it. No, stop talking, Josh. No, it's (laughs) I know you're being very nice. And I know that I I wasn't fishing for that. I just wanted to like it was frustrating. But you know me, I would have gone through like the video and found what I would consider a better picture from like the actual zoom video as opposed to like a picture that you took of your computer while we were talking and normally that's what I would do but I was like I I can't even access those files because they're all just on my computer that is tragic so I was just like I don't care anymore I can't do anything about this you know what I can weirdly relate to you Aya really because I had my my drive failed on my computer oh my like six terabyte drive whoa one of my drives what are you doing on your drive why do you have six terabytes that's i'm a filmmaker i have video footage yeah yeah, so like lots of stuff i need to have a lot of filmmaker sorry josh yeah um so yeah did you know i make movies i didn't know yeah so i I do that (laughs) okay that was very scary and my computer would take hours to start because it would it would say it was repairing the drive Mm. And it would sort of do that. I think it moves things from like bad sectors to good sectors on the drive or something like that. But every time it would start, it took longer and longer to do that. Mm. So I barely managed to get this computer on at one point after repairing the drive. Mm. And then it spent 20 hours because again, the drive was failing. It spent 20 hours transferring everything on it to another drive on my computer, or at least Mm. the important stuff. No, it sounds brutal. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, Now it's now it's done. I just barely saved the information. Yeah. So I didn't in hindsight, I should have like backed up my information. I should have done something before I decided to upgrade my operating system like a fool thinking that that would just work. And yeah, so I'll figure it out. I'll find a way but I just haven't had the time or energy. So I'm gonna get a new computer. (laughs) In the meantime, because this one. Oh, would you say that we've experienced a uh, cruel injustice with our computers? Oh, wow. I think, I think we. Is that a segue? I've got some segue. competition for a segue queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 
I would say that it's a minor injustice and really it's more of an inconvenience than any kind of injustice. You know, sometimes when those computers fail on you at the most inopportune times, it feels like an injustice. Yeah, it can be. It's annoying. I feel like I really try not to get too annoyed about things like that. I'm like, it's just a thing. It's just some like I wasn't it's not like I lost anything too too important unless you consider the videos of these important those pictures of you <laughs> all those pictures of me Wait, did you lose like every video that we've I, ever done of I this didn't, podcast there's somewhere on the computer i will be able to and this it, computer the like i'm sure there's a way to get it to turn back on oh, to recover, some, right, yeah too. to recover stuff i just yeah. i don't know how and i have to take it somewhere to do that and it's not like a and laptop that I can just pick up and take. So anyways, mm. I'll figure it out. That's not the point. I just, I try not to get too upset about things like that because there are real things to be upset about. There are real injustices in the world. So anytime someone gets really upset about something that is just a material thing, like I said, I didn't lose anything particularly important. If the only thing I lost was a computer, then I didn't, I didn't lose anything. So if someone cuts you off while driving, that's, you're totally cool about that. That's, that's different. Not a, that's just a minor well, theoretically, yes, I shouldn't get too much, but that's also someone doing something that they shouldn't do. I think that's more, that does feel like more of an injustice because it's someone doing something to you. My computer, it does not have, my computer is not sentient as far as I know. It does a lot of stuff, but it's not a human aware mm. of its surroundings. I don't know who built these hard drives. They're failing on us. Yeah. Other tiny computers like boop, 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 boop. Yeah, your tiny computers building other tiny computers yeah that'd be pretty cool but i i still don't it's not a human that has a sense of justice like you know that when someone's cutting in front of you they're like haha i hate you no not necessarily but maybe mm -hmm. okay anyways good segue josh <laughs> welcome back to adulthood friends this is the discussion-based podcast where two former childhood acquaintances now friends discuss the things that adverb josh scientifically Okay. Scientifically matter. Scientifically. That's your adverb of the week. And I'm Aya. I'm Josh. Today, we've got episode 31. Ooh. All about injustice. Injustice. Yeah. So do we live in a just or an unjust world, in your opinion? Do you feel that it's becoming more or less just? Does it matter who you are or what your perspective is? How does your personal perspective or your personal subjectivity affect how you view justice or how you view the world as just or unjust? Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to that, Josh? A lot. Once we get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> Let's get into it. And we're back. Oh my God. It's so good to be back. It is. It feels almost like we never left. Josh, do you think we live in a just or an unjust world? <laughs> I like how like we have the question of the episode and then you're like, I know how we're going to start it when we come back after the music. <laughs> Let's just ask Josh the question of the episode and have him answer well, that you were... yes or no. You know what? You weren't <laughs> saying anything. So I figured uh, we can start a different way. I know that you get to ask the questions, but actually, can you answer this one first? I want to know what you think. Do we live in a just or an unjust world? I don't think. No, I don't think we live in a, in a just world. Do you think we live in an unjust world? Yeah. Okay. Of course. Do you think we live in a just world? I think that the question is supposing that it's one or the other. And I think. Okay. We, we live oh, in a world. give a more nuanced answer. <laughs> great, great, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not like if we you're going to give me the yes or no podcast. Of course, there's more nuance than that. Yeah. There are aspects of the world that are just, but I would say fairness. Okay. Wait, first let's start with what is justice? What's what is your justice? idea of justice? Because to talk about yeah. injustice, we've got to have an idea of what justice is. So yeah, define that shit for us. You want me to define it? Okay. Um, yeah. Overall, it's kind of the concept of fairness, right? So mm. impartiality, whether things feel equitable. And I mean, there are different kinds of justice, right? So there's social justice. That's probably what many people have heard in the past years, at least. So fairness in society. So that can be things like healthcare, employment, housing. It can also be equity in general, just having everything equal opportunity. And it's tied very much to human rights, right? So what's fair to all people, right? Racial justice, criminal justice, right? So these are all variations of how we deal with fairness in society, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
did that is that an okay definition yeah that pretty much covered it okay great <laughs> well I, all right i'm all done then all right, we're Your done turn. now yeah <laughs> well let me ask so you mentioned their equity mm -hmm. and in another sentence you mentioned the word equality mm. what's the difference between equality equity i think there's another one in there right i know equity and equality as kind of the main difference right so like I think equity is one of those important principles of social justice. So it takes into account the effects of discrimination and aims for an equal outcome as opposed to equality, which kind of gives everyone. OK, there's an image that I'll describe to you, which is one of the main ones that's used in describing equality versus equity. So, I mean, there's a famous meme, right? That kind of like image about it, right? Where you show like three people standing on boxes. OK, so that's what I'm about to share with you. <laughs> that's literally what I have open to show you. Here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that is. That's the exact thing so, that I was thinking of. Yeah. Right. So you've got a you want to describe this image for us, Josh? Yeah. So on the left, it says equality. And on the right, it says equity. And on the left, we see three people standing on boxes, right? They each have a box. So in a sense, somebody might say, oh, it's equal because each of these three people gets a box to stand on to then look over this fence. Except, is it really equal that they all got the same thing considering each of them are different heights? Mm -hmm. So like the tallest person gets the most out of it because- He can see you know, way over the fence. He can see way over the fence. And the second person's like struggling to look over it. And the third one still can't see over the fence despite being given the same box. Right. So equity, I think that's talking more about equality of outcome, right? Mm -hmm. So in that one, the first guy, he doesn't even get a box because he can see over just fine. The second guy, he gets one box. And the third guy, he gets two boxes because now their outcomes are similar. Mm. But we actually have to give them different things. Right. And what's the fence? What is the fence, Aya? Well, I think the fence is kind of anything that prevents equity from the start, right? Things like discrimination, things like... Yeah, it's the status quo. Yeah, it's the things that make it so that the tallest guy can easily see over the fence where the other, whereas the other two are struggling mm. from things that aren't their fault or the things that aren't, you know, it's not like things that they worked for. You don't get to choose how tall you are, right? Right. Yeah. So it's fair to say that if everybody already was born into exact equal circumstances then the equality side of that meme, you know, that that first one would make more sense. Yeah. But because, you know, if we really want everybody to feel fairness, being fair doesn't mean giving everybody the exact same thing, right? Right. Maybe a more simple, easy to understand way is that, you know, someone who's born rich might not need a bunch of help moving forward. Maybe they're able to even, you know, pay for their own schooling or whatever that is, you know, that, that's what some people think. And then somebody who's born without much money, maybe the, the state should help. Right. And that's more equity, you know, mm -hmm. so they both get the opportunity of education. Yeah. Yeah. Good. There we go. We're defining complex terms. Look at us. <laughs> that's what this podcast is all about. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's a whole, we could write a dissertation on this, or maybe you could, because you're the one with the PhD. No, I, I don't want to write more <laughs> dissertations. I wrote one. I'm good. Bye. I know. I think the reason that we, you know, it feels interesting to talk about this right now, and I think it's important to note that we are not experts on this stuff in that sense, yeah. right? We're not legal experts or experts on social justice in that way. We haven't experienced everything ourselves. That's not the, the point of this. this and we're not going to touch on- disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah, we good, need that good. class disclaimer here because there's we do going to be a lot in fact most things that we don't touch on i think that's yeah. that's not the point of this but there are some current events going on that i think would be interesting to talk about mm -hmm. there's some big trials actually happening especially in the states right now mm -hmm. where people are talking about justice a lot right now all kinds of justice and as we know we have a in order to achieve justice in our societies, right? We have a system set up with police, mm -hmm. a court system and juries and judges. And the idea that if you're charged with something that you can be judged by a jury of your peers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And that you're given a fair trial. And that you're given a fair trial. I and mean, that's the idea, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people argue one way or the other. And I think one of the questions you asked earlier, I think it's very important to point out, you were talking about, I think the subjective view of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something could be just to one person and unjust to another person, the same situation. Right. So I don't know if justice is objective. Right. It should be, but it, it's hard to get out of yourself enough to, to see sometimes. Right. Yeah. Or there's justice for you and then there's justice for everyone. Right. Right. And yeah. there's <laughs> a lot of disagreement on that. Would, would you say that yeah. you experienced yourself personally when you were growing up a lot of injustice or would you say you generally had a relatively just upbringing? Can I answer a different question that I wish you had asked instead? Because wait, wait, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we can come back to that. Just because what you just said about how something may seem just or unjust, 
I think you can also come back to even that idea of equity and that meme that we we're talking about with the three people in the boxes. So there's actually a lot of controversy about equity in general, about the things that are done to help people who haven't been given all of the advantages to succeed or to have at least the same opportunities to succeed as people who have been given more advantage in life. So, mm. but sometimes there is controversy to say like, oh, well, why should they, why should they get that? Is that really such a disadvantage? Even, you know, when you're applying for school, or at least when I was applying for teacher's college at Western, there's an equity form that you can fill out. Mm. And there's a certain number of spots set aside for people in who have certain equity equity related situations where this is where affirmative action and stuff is, is a part of exactly. that right yes yeah. so affirmative action that's the word i should be using. yes because that's there's a lot of controversy about that that you know you shouldn't be giving people more opportunities it's like the arguments um potentially nuanced i i know jordan peterson and his ilk like to say things <laughs> like equal opportunity but not equal outcome. like you can't force equal outcome you know? i mean i do agree that you can't force equal outcome but equal opportunity means equal opportunity to have equal outcome right <laughs> right you can't force the outcome obviously but right. you can always statistically analyze the outcomes and get a sense that maybe maybe if it's unequal in the outcome there's something wrong with the equality of opportunity right okay yeah right? that makes sense yeah because there because you know, technically speaking, there shouldn't be a reason that one group of people doesn't seem to be as educated as another group of people if we all mm -hmm. have the same opportunity. Right. It's more likely that that group isn't getting the same opportunities. Right. But racist people or yeah, racist, racist people. adjacent people will, <laughs> will say that there are certain genetic things that change yeah. how oh, people oh, are. Oh. Women aren't, maybe women aren't supposed to go to school and that's why they, things. yeah or misogynistic yeah there's a lot of racism there there's a lot of misogynism sexism all that stuff you know to be slightly kinder to some people it's still just as bad you know the ignorance of it all mm. but i think people want to believe that we live in a just world hmm. it's really uncomfortable to believe that we don't to believe that the way things are aren't the way things should be i just remember as a kid like i'd like to believe that the prime minister, the president is, is exactly who it should be. And, yeah. and, you know, adults are smart. And once you become an adult, oh, you make the right choices. And yeah. I'm a kid, I'm a, I'm a stupid kid. I don't know yet, but when I get there, everything will be as it should. And instead what happens is often we grow older and we go, oh my God, like <laughs> there's a lot of problems here. And our parents did not, you know, you know call them out anyone specifically of our parents, but that generation yeah. didn't solve everything in their generation before them didn't solve everything and so on right if so anything like yeah they didn't solve made it worse <laughs> <laughs> made everything worse now they're okay. i mean something and i think we can argue There's... that our world has become more just in some ways and less just in others right i think that we obviously people often say oh my god look at all these horrible inequalities we have now a more positive spin on it would be like look at all the conversation we're having about these right. inequalities now when people used to shove it under the rug you know yeah, well, that's what I, I was wondering, you know, when we wrote our question of is our world becoming more or less just was I wonder if injustices are just more available to us, like they're, yeah. they're better informed about the world overall, or maybe there's all the media coverage and more investigative reporting about the injustices makes us feel that there is more, but it's actually just that we're hearing about it more now, Yeah, which is a good thing in a way. And I would like to believe that is what is happening because I want to mm -hmm. believe that we're heading towards a more just towards. world. Yeah. But again, that's more of a, I want to believe statement. I Hold know. on just one second. I'm going to close my window because there is okay. an ice cream truck that will not shut up. Oh, I want ice cream. <laughs> Get me ice cream, please. It only slightly helped. Oh, you know, is there another window? No. Why is that so loud? I hate this ice cream truck. It just bothers everybody in the neighborhood all the time. It's an injustice, Aya. I know, I know. It's not fair, Aya. Other people <laughs> in the world get to live in neighborhoods where ice cream trucks don't bother them. Oh my God, that's <laughs> that's your injustice, Josh. I want, <laughs> I want ice cream trucks. And you also have like- Can you have the ice cream truck without the music somehow? I don't know, they got to figure this out. What? And at least what? if they're going to play Why? the music over and over again, does it have to be like drilling into your brain the same irritating, repeated Oh my God, song? I can't believe this. I've never heard anyone complain about an ice cream truck. What? And and to hear you complain about it, I don't know why what? that's so incredible to me. Like, it's like a lovely sound of like, it's a lovely sound. Come get some ice cream. 
I don't know. I don't really know. So you've never been trying to watch a movie or, I don't know, record a podcast? How many ice cream trucks do you have? <laughs> no, no, I don't think I remember ice cream trucks going by, but I think that that's like a lovely sound to a lot of people. Yeah, when you want ice cream. Other than that, you When know, don't you want ice cream? Okay, I think that's maybe, the real that's question. That's true. Josh. I may want ice cream all the time, <laughs> but if I'm in the middle of something, I'm sorry. That is aggravating and it's disturbing the public peace. Well, if I could hear an ice cream truck right now, even though it's like snowing here, I would totally run outside. Like, sorry, Josh, one second. I hear music of ice cream. Wait, you would pause our podcast? Boop, I think boop, it's... Boop, 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 you know what? Maybe there is hope for this world. I can't hear it anymore. We can move forward. Oh, my God. Of all the things to complain about, you don't even complain about very many things. It's weird to me that ice cream truck music is one of them. It's just, it comes around this neighborhood and just... And I don't even... Who says they even sell ice cream? It's probably drugs. I don't... That's what I think. Oh, my God, Josh. What... <laughs> <laughs> who's the pessimist now i don't ever see any kids running up to that truck well are you looking at the truck or are you just complaining about the music i've race? looked at the truck before i've seen it i've and seen you don't it see any children stopping right in front of my house and just sitting there oh well that's different why is it stopping there and sitting there yeah, that's a good question i well and now it sounds like a drug deal of some kind but do you need <laughs> to refrigerate drugs i don't know maybe it's not refrigerated I, it's just the Oh, yeah, it's just a, <laughs> it's a cover. But why would a drug dealer call attention to themselves with that kind of music? But here we are selling drugs. Well, they're hiding in plain sight. Think about it. I guess. I think they do also sell ice cream. I mean, I've, I've gotten some ice cream from them before once. Oh, the truth yeah. comes out. Was it not yeah. good ice cream? Are you dissatisfied with it? Even that? bad ice cream is good ice cream. I mean, it's true. There is no, so I've never had was, bad ice cream. Yeah, it was fine. Had mediocre ice cream. But yeah. What are we talking about? Injustice? Okay, yeah, that was way off topic. <laughs> or was it? <laughs> no, I think that was pretty off topic. Although perhaps not everyone is able to, one, pay for ice cream. Two, <laughs> have it so available to them at all times. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I don't know if there are any more things. Are you saying that ice cream is a right, not a privilege? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would like to say that. Yes, I'd like to go on the record to say <laughs> ice cream is a right. Again, these are topics, you know, to dive in depth individually for other episodes and I think here we're just going to be paying like lip service to them but yeah. like for me one of the biggest injustices living in the United States comes down to this terrible horrible healthcare system we have here oh god yeah it's the worst it is you, you know about this healthcare system oh everyone my god, knows it's... about this healthcare system that's how bad no, it is people here there's a lot of people I've met who will defend it again what I can't understand why people because you know why they don't come from where we come from where we don't have the same issues yeah they hear you know there's talking points about whatever problems might be in these other countries and for the record America is the only quote-unquote developed country or whatever that doesn't have a universal health care system mm. the other countries don't have perfect systems I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect system no but none of these other countries are scrambling to get rid of their universal health care systems because people are happy with them in fact they want more universal care not less mm. Yeah. And over here, everyone's like, no, I think I, I like, what if I like my insurance company? <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Amen. You know, and the corporate greed of the pharmaceutical industry here and the way people are paying a gajillion dollars for insulin, they have to pay to live. Mm -hmm. It's absolute insanity to me. People are rationing their insulin. There's injustice for you. Yeah. I don't believe you should have to be rich to live, to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think like, oh, you have more money. Here, you deserve more life. Here's a thing that your body can't make, but we have made. Yeah, here it is. We have it, but we, yeah, we have these it. guys we need to make. We can provide it to you, but we're yeah. not going to unless you're really rich. Sorry. Exactly. Sorry, yeah. These, these guys need to make gajillions of dollars off of your, it's supposed to be like a market. Like you're supposed to be able to go out and choose what you want to buy, you know, in an industry. That's okay. I get that. You don't need to go buy a radio, mm. but if you need something, you can't be like, uh, hmm. Well, we're selling it for this much. It's on sale this week. Uh, <laughs> should I buy insulin or should I pay rent? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's a huge, I, I think that that's something that needs to be heavily reformed here. And I repeatedly fight for this about this subject, because if I have to choose my priorities, I think healthcare is mm -hmm. like at the top. For sure. We pay taxes here. That's where they should go first and foremost. Oh yeah. You think so? I do. Not to make... Well, I don't know what else they do with taxes. No, well, it almost all goes to like self-defense and whatever. Right. It's not like we, uh, America is like, we spend more on defense than like the next 12 countries combined or something. Mm. Like, why not the next nine countries combined? And you don't even have that many borders. Yeah. Yeah. And then put it towards healthcare. Anyway, that's my rant about healthcare. Okay. Uh <laughs> we can get into that another time. <laughs> Well, I think that we partly chose this topic because we had some current events that came up that you were interested in bringing up. Yes. Do you want to bring some of those up? 
Well, I'm sure you know, there's been some very high profile trials going on recently. Mm -hmm. People have been talking about them a lot for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, Two of the big ones are the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and the Ahmaud Arbery Mm -hmm. trial, The you know, about the three men who uh, chased him and shot him down. Yeah. So these are actually quite different, I think, but I think they speak to kind of what's going on. Okay. I, I, I think they have been heavily politicized, sometimes rightly, maybe wrongly at times, it depends. But they speak to a lot of these social issues, social justice issues that are mm. part of our discourse right now and should be part of our discourse right now. Mm-hmm. The Ahmad Arbery trial. So what happened there? Um, and I, I apologize if I do a, like a poor job of summarizing okay. these high profile trials. Well, you're course, not a... Are you a professional summarizer of court cases? <laughs> no, I'm not a professional in this regard. Well, I forgive you then. And now I feel like the weight of, of, of accurately summarizing this. But basically, there's this, this guy, this young guy. His name is Ahmad Arbery. He's black. And he was jogging through the neighborhood, as he often does. I think he was um, checking out uh, this house. It was an open house or something. He was checking it out, maybe considering buying it or just, I don't know exactly, but he was just checking it out legally. And I guess there had been some burglaries in the neighborhood. Mm. And these three guys, basically, it was a father and son, the McMichaels and their neighbor was Roddy, I think. And they saw him in the area coming out of that house. And they were convinced that he was a burglar. That he was committing crimes in the neighborhood. Did he come out carrying a giant TV or something? Like he had nothing. He had nothing on him. No, they were just convinced of this. And so they chased him. They got in the truck and they chased him down and he ran naturally. And they had guns mm-hmm. telling mm-hmm. him to stop. Are they policemen? They're just random people. They're they're just citizens. Although I think the old I could be wrong. I think the older McMichael Not that being a policeman makes that okay for no reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it makes it worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the older one actually, I think, was a policeman or he had been. Mm. These guys chased this poor young man down. They cornered him with their truck. He tried to escape. A scuffle ensued and they shot him and he died. Yeah, that's that's really messed up, to say the least. Yeah, there was more to it, too. It's been said that there's, you know, they said some horrible things, too, to him. Mm. All this stuff. These three guys, these three men were just convicted okay. of murder. Good. They are murderers. On a number of counts, yeah. and they're likely going to jail for a long time. Good. You're saying good, and... I feel that that's just, yeah. And that feels to me, and it felt to a lot of people, like justice. Mm. Now, it's interesting. Justice, to me, like, people want justice, but... I mean, it's not... It's not the only thing they want. You know, his family doesn't just want justice. They want their, of their son back, their family member back. It's not true justice. Like, nothing... Yeah. It doesn't fix the situation, but at least... But it shows that there's... Con- there's fair consequences right or supposedly fair consequences Mm -hmm. for that happening and considering there's been a lot of times where people like that have gotten away Mm -hmm. with their actions it's nice to see that maybe we're heading towards a a world maybe where that doesn't always happen Mm -hmm. or doesn't happen at all now there was also quite a bit of video of what happened here because one of the guys the neighbor actually recorded the situation while they were chasing him down and i think having video probably helps a lot right it does yeah so in this case we all got to see what happened Mm. but there's probably been a lot of cases where you know we didn't get to see everything that happened and they tried to claim self-defense against this unarmed oh bullshit you can't like create a whole situation and then claim Mm self-defense yeah so like oh i attacked them and then they I felt threatened by yeah, exactly. them like, running he tried away. To take, he tried That's to take crazy. my gun from me. It's like, well, yeah, of course he did. threateningly pointed your gun at him and he didn't do anything wrong. And there was never any evidence that he did anything wrong yeah. whatsoever. Also, like, call the real police. Not that they're any better most of the time. But still, like, if you think something's happening, how about not just running after someone with guns? Anyways. It's fine. I'm sure there's so many things yeah. wrong with this. I don't even know where to start. So go for it. Yeah, there's a lot. It was a very upsetting situation. And I think most people agree that justice was carried out here. Mm. I'm sure there are some dumb people out there who are going, oh, no, those guys should have gotten off. They were totally right to <laughs> chase this person down and feel threatened by him. And what's the underlying thing a lot of people are feeling here is that there's some racism going on, right? There's yeah. Of course. There's this black guy in the neighborhood coming out of a, I think it was probably a white residential area. Mm. And they had all these biases and racist probably beliefs with or without realizing it. And their minds were telling them that this guy's a criminal 
Mm-hmm. But you, you have to wonder if it was a white guy walking out of there, would they have thought the same thing? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't seem as likely. Yeah. So it, it becomes another case of a, you know, another black man being killed for totally the main reasons in our society. So yeah, that, that, that was incredibly sad. You know, what happened was, was horrible, but we can argue that there was some form of justice carried out mm. after the fact. So that was one of the big trials that have been going on. Another one was the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. And this to me is a lot more complicated if you ask me. And I just want to preface this by saying what I went into this knowing after watching various media and what I heard happened, this is just my honest thought. I thought this guy is this kid. He was 17 years old. This kid is trash. His beliefs are trash. He deserves what's coming to him, right? Mm. So what happened here was there was this kid named Kyle Rittenhouse. And it's probably true. He has some ideology I probably do not agree with. <laughs> and he went to the Kenosha protests and riots, right? With an AR-15. If you recall, there was a man named Jacob Blake. Well, there was the rioting that was happening in that area first. In Kenosha, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but the reason all this stuff kind of started was there was a black man who was shot by police. His name was Jacob Blake and he became paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And again, it was another one of these police shootings that is driving everybody insane. One of many. One of many, right? It was extremely upsetting. So it led to protests and rioting as well. This kid, Kyle, heard about the rioting and it's kind of weird. He lived, he was from Illinois, but he also partially lived in Wisconsin. Did he live there? I thought he was just visiting a friend. So that's, so here's the thing. There was so much misinformation going about, including to myself. So I actually watched much of the trial, if not most of it. Okay. And once I watched it, I'm like, oh my God, this is, this isn't exactly what everybody is thinking, right? Things are not what people think. It's has been heavily politicized, right? Hmm. Now, one of the things I thought was dumb is this kid went down to these riots. He's 17 years old with a gun. He's not one. He's not allowed to have a gun. Two, it's not his gun. Why would he go there? Why would he go there? He kind of another thing you find out, he kind of was allowed to have a gun. (laughs) How is he allowed to have a gun? Legally, he was you're again, he's not allowed to like buy one, but he's allowed to have one. There's like some weird rules in there. How he actually got it. Who knows? Maybe he like lawyered his way out of that. But having it I think he actually was allowed to have it and there was a bunch of people that went down there to supposedly defend property during the rioting Mm -hmm. now was the rioting yeah there was right people were lighting dumpsters on fire and breaking windows looting stores it was happening and people did have businesses there that were getting destroyed it was his belief in going and protecting that stuff actually he he went there also as a medic it's important to point out he considered was he wearing his medic yeah he had some medic gear did he have like that big backpack that medics carry or did he just have his gun? He had like a pouch, I think I saw. I mm, okay. <laughs> he had like a medic pouch. He, he wanted to help people. Again, my idea of this guy is like, sure, sure. He was there to yeah, help people. So right? is mine. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a natural feeling and belief that I had hearing what I heard. Cause I'm a pretty, I'm kind of a lefty. I've become even more lefty over time and you're a pretty lefty person. We agree on a lot of these things. Yeah. You know, because empathy, I feel like empathy is a, it's a left, kind of yeah. a big thing on the left. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You right-wingers with your lack of empathy. <laughs> Not saying right-wingers don't have empathy. Don't come at me. Well, aren't we though? <laughs> well, no, just kidding. <laughs> oh, don't bring me into this. Joking. <laughs> Joking. Okay. So Kyle is down there and what ends up happening is, okay, so here's the news headlines we were hearing, right? Kyle Rittenhouse kills two people he shoots and kills two people and injures a third mm-hmm. like by shooting him as well of course surrendering himself to the police mm-hmm. what literally just walking up to the police with his gun right mm-hmm. and everybody's like what the hell this kid just went and like massacred a bunch of people at these protests he needs to burn for this this is some trumpy sort of racist thing he's a white supremacist he's a proud boy i don't you know i remember reading this and going like yeah screw this guy. And then I like listened to the trial and I was actually watching with my friend as well. And we were just going like, wait a second, this is, there's so many details here that I was wrong about that I didn't realize. And what's interesting here, just like the other trial, even though they're very different, although what's similar is Kyle Rittenhouse was claiming self-defense. Yeah, I know. I think that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So what's the same here is that there was video of basically everything. Mm-hmm. And this is huge because there's some things here that are not subjective they're objective we can see what happened so what ended up happening was this first guy his name was joseph rosenbaum and you could see him in the videos he's a very kind of angry belligerent person he just got out of jail he had a a plastic bag with his belongings um and he didn't take his medication that day 
There are some things about him in his history. Of course, that stuff's not admissible in court, but I mean. Oh, no, but it was, that was published like pretty well. Oh, the fact that he had a bag and stuff, but the fact that he just, for example, what wasn't admissible is that he did spend like much of his adult life in prison for being a pedophile. Oh, yeah, I know. Now suddenly, wait, what? Well, I don't care then if he's dead. <laughs> it's again, there's <laughs> that's again, that's why they don't allow it in court, though, because that has nothing to do with what happened here. Right. But it changes my opinion. It does change your opinion bit. of him. Yeah. But here's the thing. What we're asking now is, OK, OK, OK. Did he deserve to die for this? Like what well, happened? Right. OK. But the thing with the self-defense. Sorry, you have like a way that you're going through this. Did you want to? I'll let you. Uh, well, I was going to okay. describe what I understood from watching the trial. OK, but, you go. You go. But, no, but no, do it, if, do it, do it. So Joseph Rosenbaum. Again, my understanding was he shot and killed Joseph Rosenbaum. Then he shot and killed a guy named Anthony Huber. And then he wounded a guy named Gage Grosskreutz and then, you know, ran off. Mm -hmm. So when you watch the video, what happened was this guy, Joseph Rosenbaum, who was there rioting. And I mean, rioting, like he was lighting things on fire and Mm -hmm. all over the place. He was running up to people with guns and pushing them and getting in their face. He's calling people the N-word a bunch. Oh, no. It's a white guy, by the way. All these people, by the way, that were shot were white. And I'm bringing this up because this is saying, kind Josh? of saying it's good to kill white people. No, I'm, no, I'm not saying that, obviously. <laughs> I'm, I think it's important to know because I think some people had it in their heads based on whatever little media they read that some like white kid came and shot some black people. Oh, or based on the fact that it was it became like a racial thing, right? A riot based on the protests. Exactly. OK, right. That's what the protests and riots were about. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's also very possible there are people there just taking advantage of the chaos of the situation. Of to course. Let yeah. Out all of their anger. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. I, it doesn't sound like, well, I, I guess I don't know Rosenbaum, but it doesn't sound like he was there because of his conviction so much. Maybe as, he was. Maybe, maybe, maybe that he was. was. Part of it, but he was very, people okay. would use the word belligerent and mm-hmm. how they described him. He was kind of chaotic and belligerent, like you didn't know what he was going to do. I mean, he still doesn't deserve to die for that. I don't think anybody deserved to die there. I don't think I don't wouldn't use the word deserve to die. Okay. But the real question is, did Kyle kill these people in self-defense? People were claiming that he was an active shooter after he shot him. Right. From what I understand, this guy started a fire. But Kyle went and put out a fire somewhere. Right. He was like going around putting up fires. There is even video of him offering some people like help as a medic. He's not officially a medic in that regard, by the way. He's 17 years old. He took some training course, some EMT training course. Okay, we can admit even if he was acting in self-defense and all of that, can we just agree that this guy is a little shit. Like, what are you doing? Why did you come here? Can you just like stay home, not take your gun to a protest? Yeah, I, I clearly hoping I personally, that you get into some sort of situation yes. where you can shoot people. Is he hoping that or not was part of it. And there was some inadmissible evidence as well that he said out of anger at one point to his like buddy, like, I can't wait to take my AR-15 down there and shoot some looters. Exactly. Yeah, he said something that yeah. wasn't allowed in court. That's something he said now. Was he just kind of saying that? Who cares? Well, he ended up actually doing it. Anyone who says that, there's got to be some truth to it you think he why would he why would someone who doesn't want to be in a situation where they're fearing for their life or they don't want to be in a situation like that why would they go there well i don't think he was with a gun well that's what was brought up in court right that's what i was asking myself but you start to learn some things when you're following the court case that we may not have realized nothing fixes that i i understand i don't think he should have gone there of course i think that was dumb for him to go there a 17 year old kid with a gun that is a situation waiting to happen right Mm -hmm. the fact that he did go there originally we find out earlier than that he was cleaning graffiti off of walls and he went there to supposedly someone was offering to pay to defend their businesses and and just like stand guard there so people don't break into the stores why don't they hire a security guard not a random 17 year old apparently it was it was also argued that the police actually weren't they kind of backed away and let stuff happen there they weren't actually stopping well clearly yeah because it was so people were very afraid for their he was black i'm sure they would have shot him but that's fine Mm. Anyway, this guy, Joseph Rosenbaum, after Kyle put out a fire, he goes and he starts chasing him Mm -hmm. and threatening him. Apparently, he's saying things like, I get alone with you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to murder you. I'm going to. He said all kinds of stuff to him. Right. And he started crazy chasing him. And he threw that bag that he had at him. There's stuff in the bag. They were saying it wasn't just like a bag. Right. But anyway, it was a scary situation. They Mm -hmm. threw at him and he came running right after him for like a while. Mm -hmm. And he literally reached for his hand was like. It was shown to be like on the gun. And that's when Kyle shot him. Mm -hmm. I think it was like four times in one second. He just bang, 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 right? And killed him. 
Now, whether or not that was self-defense, that was what was kind of like litigated in the trial and the situation that he was in there. But you can hear it on the video too. He's yelling as he's running away, friendly, friendly, friendly. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to be in that situation. He was being chased by this guy Mm -hmm. who was kind of being threatening to him all night. And so he ended up shooting this guy, right? And then what happens? Other people kind of heard about this or saw it. And the mob comes after him because they start yelling, oh, there's an active shooter Mm -hmm. who just is going around like shooting people. So they went after him. And he had a mob of people chasing him. Mm -hmm. So Kyle is like running away and they don't understand the context or nuance of what happened, right? They see him as an enemy. They're trying to, in their minds, to stop him. Mm-hmm. This is the skateboard guy. Comes up. Yes, yeah, so there's a few people. Actually, one guy threw like a rock at his head. Mm-hmm. Um, it would just hit, knocked off his hat, but almost hit him, right? Skateboard guy came once already and hit him. Mm-hmm. That was Anthony Huber. Hit him once with a skateboard, but he kept going. Eventually, he kind of got like from exhaustion or whatever. He fell down to the ground mm-hmm. and all the people started coming at him. There's a guy, they called him Jump Kick Man. They don't actually know who he was. He came and kicked Kyle in the head. And then skateboard guy came in and he took the skateboard and he hit him in the neck, like in the back of the head with the skateboard and then tried to grab his gun off him on the ground. Mm-hmm. And as he was pulling the gun, like the strap was coming away from him. You could see all this in the video. But why didn't you just give up his gun? Give up your gun. People are scared of you because you have a giant gun. You idiot. Like he's an idiot. So there's an argument why that wouldn't be smart for him to give up his gun. But let me explain just what happened here. Okay. As he's pulling away the gun, he fires a shot. Anthony Huber is shot and he dies. Mm. At that time, when that happened, Gage Grosskreutz, who's also a medic, by the way, he comes running up and he tries to, as soon as Anthony Huber got shot, you see him like kind of jump back, put his hands up in the air and duck down a little bit. And Kyle points his gun at him and Kyle does not shoot him. He just kind of aims the gun at him and the guy's holding his hands up. Gage Grosskreutz then dives in towards him and Gage Grosskreutz was holding a gun in his hand. Mm -hmm. He had a pistol of his own. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just like guns on one side and not on the other. Mm -hmm. He had a gun himself, for what I understand, illegally. Well, one, he's a medic, but he doesn't have his stuff on either, just like Kyle doesn't have, like, these people are supposedly medics, but they don't have their, like, medic Well, he was a paramedic. He actually was a paramedic. He was, yes. Yeah, he had paramedic training. Yeah, so he had a gun, like, the way that he was holding it could seem threatening to Kyle Rittenhouse. It is conceivable that he was afraid for his life. The point is, he ended up running in towards him, and he pointed the gun at Kyle, and he got shot in the arm. Mm -hmm. He shot one shot at his arm, and then he ran off, and it, like, messed up his arm. He lost 90% of his bicep or something Mm -hmm. it was pretty gruesome i mean at least he's not dead at least he's not dead and there's a post by him later though also saying like i wish i emptied my clip into the kid or something so that didn't help his case Mm -hmm. by the way i should say gage grossquist was coming off very shady Mm -hmm. on the trial stand like he the way he was answering things and not answering certain things okay the fact that he didn't tell certain people about the gun afterwards Mm -hmm. he's like oh i just it wasn't a purposeful omission he had said Mm -hmm. but he remembered other very important details so obviously it was a purposeful omission Mm -hmm. Anyway, he ended up shooting him and then Kyle gets up, people backed off once that happened and he made his way over to the police and he surrendered. Mm -hmm. He actually tried to tell people on the way, like I just shot somebody and he got away. The question here is, was that self-defense? I think that the whole self-defense thing is based on what self-defense is to find legally. Us, just that he yes legally yeah. i understand the legal reason why he was let off it still doesn't feel just so we didn't say this yet but yeah so kyle was acquitted of acquitted of everything yeah. they, well they went so i felt that the prosecution was dumb <laughs> i felt the prosecution yeah was i don't so, think they did the best job so stupid and the defense was amazing mm. but the prosecution went for first degree murder meaning they tried to argue that oh, he intended to kill these people that's stupid they didn't do manslaughter no oh that that seems crazy. Even I know that. They went for first degree murder, right? <laughs> and I don't know anything about this stuff. Like, did he intend to kill anybody? And not only that, they had video evidence of the contrary. Mm. So the prosecution was saying a lot of dumb things. I'll give you an example of something they said. Okay. They asked Kyle at one point. They said, you've played the video game Call of Duty before, haven't you? Who hasn't? I've played Call of Duty. He's like, yeah. And he's like, well, isn't the AR-15 gun very similar to the type of gun that you would have in Call of Duty? What the fuck? And he's like, I mean, there's lots of guns in Call of Duty. It's a first person oh. shooter game. And he's like, so don't you have like multiple like confirmed kills in Call of Duty? Oh, that's so dumb. <laughs> and he's like... It's a video game. Yeah, that's craziness. And honestly, Kyle sounded very good on the stand. Like he was a very good advocate for himself. Didn't he break down in in tears? He broke down at one point. Some people think it's fake. I had a hard time believing that was fake. It seemed like a real panic like moment, but you, you never know for sure. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just telling you after watching what was going on, the prosecution was trying to argue like, oh, you're saying you're an EMT, but you never really had full EMT training. And like, you're not a real EMT. And he's like, well, I'm not 18. I couldn't do this. And they said, you were like a cadet with the firefighters and stuff. 
but you're not a real firefighter. He's like, no, I'm not 18. I wasn't able to do that. I just wanted all to they're help. reinforcing is that he's a little baby, like is that he's young. It's not just that. And they're like, you're <laughs> not even a real fire. And he was a lifeguard. All I kept reinforcing is this kid just wanted to he wants to help. He just wanted to help people. Yeah, that's annoying. And here's the thing. Once I got once you kind of get out of your mind a little bit that he's he's 17, whatever his parents believe, he probably believes, right? I remember when I was 17 and I thought the police just were amazing, all of them. Like, I want to be a police officer when I grow up. Like, I thought oh, police gosh. were just the coolest. Yeah, but you would never shoot anyone accidentally. No, 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 no. And I, I didn't have guns, but we were also in Canada where it's different. But I can imagine you see all these movies with cops as heroes and everything. Look, he idolized the police. He idolized the firefighters. He idolized paramedics, you know, mm-hmm. in his mind, like he wanted to help people. Apparently he wants to study to become a nurse, is a lifeguard. Like all these things painted him as this kid who went to, and they have images of him just cleaning graffiti off the wall. Again, it's part of whatever ideology that he had as well about yeah. rioting and stuff or what he heard from his parents or community that's probably drilled into him. But I wasn't convinced watching this trial that this kid was there to kill people. He was there in his mind to help protect the place. Yeah, I, I can see that as well. And I mean, he is like when you see him, he's more pathetic than anything. Like, it's like, oh, like you're not you're not like a killer. You're like a sad little kid who doesn't. He was who... a 17 year old kid. I mean, he wasn't dumb either. He wasn't dumb. Well, I mean, I think he made dumb actions. But when you see him on the trial, he okay. he was a very thoughtful kind of person. Mm. He made the prosecution look dumb. Well, no, it sounds like the prosecution made the prosecution look dumb. But <laughs> I think it's very hard to like see him as not uh, as much more than like a very privileged in in certain ways. Kid sure. I mean, who got lucky in certain ways as well, because he's lucky that he's what? Because if not, there's no way that that would have gone that way. Like, we all know that. We all know that whether he was training to be an EMT or not, yeah. this would not have happened the same way. Yeah, he has a lot of, obviously, yeah, he has a lot of privilege there. But you mentioned something before that, like, mm. you said, why didn't he just give up his gun then? Yeah, why didn't he? When you have a, the mob came after him. There's well, but a, they came after him because they thought he was an active shooter. If you yes. give up your gun, are, are they going to just shoot you? That seems crazy. Yes, maybe. Mm. Realistically, mob mentality. They were coming after him. A real mob was actually coming after him. Again, it shouldn't matter. But the people he shot all had like their histories were they all have been like in prison for various things too for like abuse of I think Anthony Huber went to jail for like beating a woman or something like that. Like there was. All right. Well, and I guess. okay. (laughs) well, (laughs) again, I don't think that should necessarily define that guy or anything. I don't know all the details. I don't know. That changes my opinion a little bit. That changes my opinion more than any (laughs) of the other stuff you've said. They all had. (laughs) <laughs> Some, they're all Joseph Rosenbaum had like he spent much of his adult life in jail for five charges of pedophilia, like with you know doing stuff with preteens mm, and stuff. Okay, well then that does make it a little bit. more I know that that's not supposed to, but I don't care. That makes it more. It's not supposed to change. <laughs> that's not the reason. But that shows you what kind of a person they are, and it's like, oh, they are capable of hurting someone. They're not like nice because I saw like. I guess I saw kind of the images of at least Anthony Hubert's wife or girlfriend or something. And I was Mm -hmm. like, oh, people aren't caring as much about this person dying because he's got like spacers in his ears and he looks like an alternative dude. And they're like, you know, all these judgments are not even that's the hard thing to get out of the way when you're dealing with court. I think that should be admissible in court that he's a wife beater. and The other guy's a pedophile. I mean, it was a very big thing that it wasn't admissible in court to say that Kyle texted his friend or told his friend that he wish he had his AR-15 to shoot looters sometime before that. Right. Mm. People say stuff like that out of. I mean, that's another thing. Like in Reddit, there's a there's a subreddit called Am I the Asshole? Yeah. And people write like little things, but whether or not they're the asshole. And sometimes the answer will be like, yes, you're the asshole. No, not the asshole, like NTA. And there's also everyone sucks here, ESH. So I feel like this is an ESH situation. Everyone sucks here. Yeah, it's it is very... It- Yes, although let's return to this. The nature of the protest and what the purpose was for that were very noble, right? Mm -hmm. I've heard it argued that riots are not the way, but we should understand that it's understandable given people's anger. I also understand that real people are getting hurt and affected their businesses or livelihoods. Mm -hmm. Property is not people, but that is still people's livelihoods, right? There's so many different elements to this Mm -hmm. and it became a very political trial in this way, right? Mm -hmm. And people are asking afterwards, like, you know, Jacob Blake's family wanted to see him put away. They saw it as linked to that. Of course, Tucker Carlson is talking to him and all this crap. 
because of course the right is trying to use him the right wing are, are using him as their they someone gifted him an ar-15 as a gift that it's it's disgusting See, what's going this on is, here right that's bullshit like that but you know what threw everyone for a loop is that kyle was like i support black lives matter is what he said after that oh did he so, yeah he, he said that he's like i support mm-hmm. it, it just makes things more muddy to people's kind mm-hmm. of narratives about things right do you think it's hard to like even right now because i can't even though the things that you're telling me do kind of support a narrative that, yeah, Kyle Rittenhouse should have been let off and it is understandable that he like got off on a on a self-defense stuff. Like all yeah. of that makes sense. But the feeling, like the emotion that we have in response to this and the feeling that you have when you see people like Tucker Carlson or just the right, you know, kind of the hardline right wing people taking on Rittenhouse as like, I don't know, some sort of weird hero or something yeah, that's like that. Really upsetting that's to me. Like- upsetting. And it's hard. It's hard to like, even if all of the facts point to, oh, OK, Kyle Rittenhouse himself isn't it's such a bad still guy. A sad, upsetting, to, disturbing it's very situation. hard to. To, to yeah. get past the emotions that you feel when you see yeah. people jumping on one side or the other or like, yeah. I don't want to be, I can't be on the same. Yeah. Now it is true that on the other side of it, there's people threatening his life right now and all this stuff too. This mm. kid, he's a kid, right? I mean, he's an adult now, but he's 18, whatever, but mm. he just got let off for that. Now, was our justice system wrong? I think the justice system gets it wrong a lot. Mm-hmm. Watching this trial, at least with our understanding of self-defense laws, right? And people make choices given our laws mm-hmm. with that understanding It wasn't like he might get off. I remember watching this trial going, how could he not get off? Like, it's so clear. The video evidence is all there. We Mm. saw everything that happened. You could see him running away from Joseph Rosenbaum, yelling friendly, friendly, friendly. You could see him fearing for his life, literally. Gage Grosskreutz, the guy who got shot in the arm, gave testimony (laughs) that he was worried for Kyle's life. It was like helping the other side. As a medic, he was walking up to Kyle because he saw that Anthony Huber was threatening him. Okay. So all these things got very complicated. And yet there was a simple kind of idea that Kyle didn't actually want to shoot anybody, even though he had a gun. It obviously was part of the escalation of what was going on. He shot to kill pretty quickly, though. I think that also confuses me. Like, why wasn't he shooting at their feet or... Again, the first guy they showed with the gunpowder residue and everything... He had his hand like on his gun just about when he fired. Mm. The guy was a 30-year-old man chasing a 17-year-old kid. I mean, he was short, but he was a he was a guy. He was a big man, right? Very belligerent, very angry, saying he's going to kill him kind of guy. <laughs> Again, they got shot as he was pulling his gun away from him. Mm-hmm. Kyle very understandably thought that he was going to die if he lost his gun at that point. Mm. And not only that, there's evidence that he even Gage Crosskreutz wrote. It was deleted later, but... He said, like, I wish I emptied my clip into him. Like, he went with his gun and pointed it at Kyle when he, as soon as the opportunity arose, Kyle just kind of got to him first. Mm. They thought they were stopping an active shooter. Mm -hmm. The defense said something at one point, and I think it made a lot of sense, is, look, if you're going to chase after somebody for this reason, to stop them, you better be right. And they weren't right about what happened. Mm. That was like a tragedy of the situation, despite the context of it all. Yeah, because it's still very understandable. You see this little white kid who thinks he's like law enforcement, even though he isn't. Yeah. And it's like, that's tragic to me. Why are you there? Go home. You Like you're a child. Yes. Please go home. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It was very upsetting. It's still really annoying. It's also just like those little white boys who are like, I'm an authority figure. No, you're not. Stay home. What are you doing? Yeah. Look, this was his belief system. I don't agree with it. I don't agree <laughs> with it Pretty much for the most part. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's maybe there's overlap somewhere, but I don't I would say generally I don't agree with his ideology. Yeah. But I struggled with this a little bit because there's so much nuance and there was no nuance in the discourse online. We're seeing all these famous people tweet about how Mm -hmm. an injustice was done. And I'm thinking, like, was an injustice done in our court system here? Mm -hmm. And to some people, it was an injustice and other people, it was justice. Right. Mm -hmm. Some people, they said maybe it was justice according to our courts, but then our laws need to change. Mm -hmm. That's another sort of nuance. Maybe you shouldn't be allowed to have guns in the first place that caused this to happen yeah i mean obviously yeah. but people also made choices given the laws that we have that's important to note right so these are two kind of high profile cases that ended very differently but i thought i actually think both of them kind of justice did happen in a way mm-hmm. personally it's my personal belief it doesn't mean that i love kyle rittenhouse or anything like that but okay. just after watching the trial it became there was much more nuance to it and taking out the politicization of stuff mm-hmm. it's hard to take out the yeah. politicization it's very things. hard to do that because yeah, it's very hard to do that. And it's easier for me, obviously. Why? I'm this like white looking, white passing guy. That, uh, yeah. You know, I haven't had the same or suffered the same white experience passing. as others. 
Why did you say white passing, Josh? Well, because a lot of people would say that, you know, Jews are yeah. visibly often look white, but are mm -hmm. what's known as a hidden minority. Many Jews are not white passing too, right? Yeah. But we're part of, we were often considered not white in the past. And that's, you know. It's a weird one because you are very white passing too. Like even I get you don't ever get the whole, oh, where are you originally from? Do you, you don't get that? Yeah. I mean, I have some family that is weirdly like extremely dark skinned on one side. I didn't get any of that. Mm -hmm. So I get the benefit of white privilege yeah. because of that. Right. Yeah. My friend Jacob, he always, when they ask him like, what ethnicity are you? Are you white on the sheet or Caucasian? Mm -hmm. He doesn't put that. He puts other. Yeah. I put other. I don't know what to put. You are part Sephardic, right? Yeah. Background. Yeah. I'm a bunch of things. What do you put? I do put white because I look white. So I think I just put other unless they have something like super specific. I'm like, I'm too many things. I'm not going to. You don't need to know. Why do you need to know? Yeah. <laughs> like, none of your fucking guys. I don't know why. I always, I feel like when they're asking me, I always want to answer these things honestly. I'm like, oh, I'm white. I, I look white. Oh, they would just want to know information. I'll give them the most honest. I'm like, why do you want to know? I don't think it helps me now. Do you think it helps me nowadays to put on the forms that I'm white? It's not going to help mm, me. Like It depends on the form. No, I, I think it's more just like maybe you just grow up feeling that there's nothing there's nothing wrong, wrong. Like, until cool, now yeah. now there's something <laughs> no, it's... well but if they asked you if you were jewish would you put jewish we'll say i might i have i have a lot of pride in that i guess and in, in my in my background and culture but i have a question for you too because okay great well there's another high profile case i wanted to end yeah. on talking about before that again we'd be remiss not to bring up some other mm -hmm. i mean we're talking you're talking about being jewish and in you know justice and injustice mm -hmm. what did we learn growing up was part of our conversation as a people well, yeah. and part of our identity growing up is what it's the part of our communal trauma communal trauma is a good way to put that yeah is yeah the, the holocaust yeah the holocaust yeah 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 and i mean well you asked earlier on and i guess i didn't really answer then but like did the world seem fair when i was growing up i mean i didn't think the world was fair when i was growing up either i thought it was i remember hearing about all this stuff and it didn't seem fair i don't know maybe that's why i was like <laughs> not like the happiest you said quickly you were like unjust world yeah i yeah. i don't know that i've ever seen it as just or ever trusted like i don't know i mean i we hope maybe i'm just saying that and thinking that oh yeah of course i always knew it was unjust but maybe i'm sure some part of me hopes that things will turn out the way that they should yeah anytime i see something that's clearly to the contrary it's very upsetting and sometimes some somehow surprising even though i i know the horrible things that can be done like we were taught and like we were shown very visual images like it haunts me to this day, like the Holocaust stuff. I used to get, I used to have really bad nightmares about it. I have like very vivid dreams and it was just mm -hmm. like, as a little kid, I would have dreams that well, I'm being given a bar of soap and heading into the oh. gas chamber. Like, I don't want to dream that. No, but it's part of our, again, communal trauma, like you said, yeah. because we were so, it was so important to relay the injustice of what happened so that we don't repeat those actions. Yeah. So, I mean, we knew about that as kids, but even like I had a class earlier today where it's talking about slavery. It was talking about genocide in Rwanda. And I found myself tearing up again, like as if I don't know that these things happen. Yeah, genocide is is like to, it's just genocide so unbelievable. And yet it's happened so many times. It happens all the time. It's still happening. It's still happening in places like it's it sounds weird. But like what we talk about on this podcast about empathy and we may kind of like make mm. cutesy jokes about it. It all starts from a place of not empathizing and othering and dehumanizing mm. others. Right. And that's how these injustices often, in my opinion, begin. Mm. We separate other people from us. We dehumanize them. And then we can do terrible things to people that we don't think are us. Right. Just like when you said that the first dude was a convicted pedophile or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, then he deserves to die. Suddenly he's not you. Suddenly you can't relate to him anymore. Suddenly he's not someone worth. Yeah. Although that's not like, that's not like separating people by race or something. But... What you said though, was actually very interesting. The fact that that did that to you. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of a no, it's true. It... Sort of example. That's what people thought of the Jews, you know? No, I know. During the Holocaust, that's how they were able to be okay with it. They were all quote unquote rats. And my own grandparents were in Auschwitz. Mm. They survived Auschwitz, but most of most of their families were killed. Yeah. My grandmother had five siblings and half of them were killed and her parents were killed, murdered, I should say. My grandfather lost uh, his brother and his parents. It's just mass amounts of, of everybody's families being murdered and then them being tortured throughout that process on a, such a massive scale. And now it's not that far after now you can go to germany and it's that's a pretty nice place and people get along and they still have issues with white supremacy there as they do they here do well. no of course they where do. you are and everywhere but yeah. well i think one of the biggest uh, misconceptions is that that can't happen here 
or it can't happen. Like something special about Germany. It was that it, it could become Nazi Germany. Like that can't happen here where we have our freedom. Like Germany was an advanced first world country and it happened there. Yeah, that's crazy. Also, like, it's not like Canada was like, oh, Jews, come here. They were like, oh, one is too many. I'm pretty yeah. sure was the policy then. So, like, yep. <laughs> I was listening to this podcast, White Hot Hate, and it's it's a CBC podcast. If anyone's interested in listening to that one instead of this one, there's an, a reporter who kind of infiltrates this little white nationalist organization. And some of the stuff that they say, like, while they're on these recruiting, they're finding more white guys to join. And one of the guys, like, in one of the videos, for example, says, like, yeah, I'm I'm white. Like I have white background. Although my girlfriend, she's like one sixteenth Jewish or something like that. And then the guys like go off to kind of discuss whether or not, and this was all recorded. Like go off to discuss whether or not to let him in. And one guy's like, "Well, I'm not I'm not happy about the one sixteenth Jewish." And the other guy's like, "Yeah, I guess who even knows at that point?" It's like, "Yeah, but like what? Fuck you!" Yeah, like <laughs> it's so <laughs> ridiculous. It's oh my God. it's so ridiculous and scary. And the things that they say about people like. I mean, yeah, I don't need to repeat it here, but like they dehumanize yeah. people completely. There's a complete dehumanization. Yeah, that makes it easy to see them as people who deserve yeah. to die somehow. So we understand that there is hatred in the world and there's racism mm -hmm. and there's sexism and there's all all that stuff. Right. And there may always be to, to some degree. Right. But when we're talking about justice or injustice, mm -hmm. I think it's important to note that we're talking about how we deal with that when that comes up and how mm -hmm. we address it. Right. Whether that's part of the system itself or not. The scary thing about the Holocaust wasn't just that massive amounts of people were killed, but that in the place that that was happening, it was considered legal. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people say legality is not a guide to morality. Mm. That's why a lot of people, if they're angry about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial or whatever, it's because they're going to say, well, maybe he should have gotten off legally, but then maybe we have a problem with our legal system. Right. That's what they were arguing. So people would often go like, well, it's totally, uh, I mean, yeah, that, that Jewish person got carried off to a concentration camp and was slaughtered in the gas chambers. But I mean, the law says it's okay. So, I mean, it's not illegal. That That's insane, right? That a place can make something immoral legal or, you know, or make something moral illegal. And yet we still have that here, right? We have stuff with abortion or stuff with yeah. homosexuality, right? There, such injustices that we are barely getting, if even, you know, coming out of yeah. and getting past. So we have, you know, so long to go. Yeah. And it's just that to me is the biggest injustice where the system itself can't address the problems, right? The system itself is unjust. Then who do you turn to? That's the society we live in. How do you how do you solve that? Like I can almost understand these people during the Holocaust who maybe they thought that ah, this isn't right, but like what do I do? Do I stand outside and go this is wrong and then get shot too? Like what do I what do I do? So what do we do? Sometimes you watch the horribleness steamroll until everybody feels like a sense of shame. That seems mm -hmm. to be what I'm not saying that's what you do. I'm saying that seems to be what happens sometimes. Right. Like something so bad has to happen where people get shocked into mm -hmm. seeing the reality for a moment. Right. And then they get complacent after a while. Like the George Floyd case that kind of really drove the exactly. Black Lives Matter movement a bit more. Yeah. 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 George Floyd is a good example of that kind of shocking society into seeing what was going on and yeah. questioning how our system operates. Right. And what people can get away with, what, you know, in those positions of power. Yeah. This is, this is a big subject matter to dive into, of course. Yeah, no. It's obviously very topical. Yeah, it's scary to dive into. It's cause like you, you can't talk about everything or like encompass how. No, but yes. We're missing huge, important stuff, of course. Yeah. Again, we're not going to be able. No. But again, we were talking about current events and stuff. Yeah. The last kind of current sort of thing that came up and mm -hmm. I just. I can't believe this story. It's just an insane, crazy story. Yeah, so this was the one I hadn't heard of. So can you tell me about it? Yeah, so I'll share with you. I think you may not have heard of what happened here, but you might know the subject of this story or one of the subjects of this story better than me because it's uh, this author. Her name is Alice Siebold. Right, she wrote The Lovely Bones. Lovely Bones. Yeah, she wrote that book. I read that when I was in high school. Yeah. Okay, so I never actually read The Lovely Bones. I know it was turned into a movie by Peter Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Who directed Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the movie, but I probably should. It seems. Yeah. And then that does deal with some pretty heavy subject matter. Right. And, mm -hmm. but she also has a memoir out there called Lucky. Okay. Yeah. So she's in the news right now okay. uh, again, because there was a movie version being made of her memoir, Lucky, mm -hmm. but to back up a second, what is Lucky about and what is her story? Yeah. I mean, not her, this isn't her whole story, but this is yeah. you know, what Lucky kind of is about. When she was 18 years old, she was walking home I think she was going through a tunnel as she often did 
and a man, I guess a black man, uh, and that is important to point out here. This guy came in, he brutally raped her in the tunnel, beaten, raped, like it was, it was bad, right? I won't go, into, I don't think I'm the one to share details on this. You can look it up. But anyway, it's important to note that that happened. And she took that to authorities afterwards. You know, she reported it. Mm -hmm. She got a rape kit done. They found, I think, a single hair, like a pubic hair. And she needed stitches. And it was it was horrible, horrible stuff. Retroactive trigger warning. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, we need a trigger. We'll have no, to put a trigger okay. warning in the beginning of this. I'm sorry. That's and she, of course, she dealt with some major trauma after this. Mm -hmm. PTSD, hypervigilance kind of mm -hmm. all the time. And she felt this urgent need to kind of take control of her. And she writes about this, you know, but take control of, of her story, not to just be some victim, mm -hmm. but to drive that story herself. And she wrote a poem called Conviction, I think it was called, talking about what she would do to her, you know, to her rapist and all this stuff. Like, Well, the book Lovely Bones starts with the rape and murder of a of a girl. Yeah. So that one's like a fictional story. Obviously it's fictional, inspired. but it sounds like it starts exactly like what. No, no. She... It's in, yeah. That's inspired, as I understand, okay. by what happened to her, of course. Okay. Right. Yeah. The, the memoir is her story. Right. Okay. And it's called Lucky. Anyway, she writes this poem, I think about five days after that or something like that. This is so this is five months after the rape. Mm -hmm. She was going to university at the time. I think this might have been at Syracuse or something. She's outside. She randomly walks by this man, this black man, and she goes, Oh my God, that's him. He like smiled at her and he said something very similar to what the rapist had said. I mean, he said something like nice knowing you or something. And this guy said something like nice seeing you. Like mm -hmm. it sounded very similar. And she's like, oh my God, that's him. And she reported him to the police and he was arrested. He was convicted and he was sent to jail for 16 years. And then he got out and he was a registered sex offender Oof. for 20 something more years. So anyways, recently they were making a film version of Lucky. Mm -hmm. They were turning it into a movie, the film adaptation. And one of the film producers, while looking over, you know, what happened in the book, he started digging into what actually happened in the trial. Mm -hmm. And he started to notice some discrepancies. So he hired a private investigator to look into it. The filmmaker. A film producer, one of the film producers. Wow. Look at you guys solving crimes. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if it's solving crimes, but okay, sorry. anyway, he became convinced that Anthony Broadwater, the man who was sent away to jail for her rape, was actually innocent, mm -hmm. that he didn't do it. And thanks to, you know, the evidence he brought to light, this just happened. Anthony Broadwater was just, his conviction was just overturned and he was declared innocent. Mm. He never committed the crime. But he spent 16 years in jail for that. And then afterwards being considered a sex offender and not being able to get certain work. He didn't want to have kids with his partner because he didn't want to bring them into this sort of work. He had, you know, he was... He clearly dealt with a lot. Yeah. Right? He was like a 20 year old guy when he was put in jail. This was in 1981. Oh, no. I mean, that's clearly on the people who didn't investigate this properly. Like, that's not out. Like, so, she saw someone who looks like the guy that. Like, so, that's... yeah. So let's dive into this okay. for a second. Right. So I'm, I'm looking into this. Right. There's a lot of people yelling online, angry at her. Like, oh, did she even get raped? Did she? Did oh, she... fuck that. Yeah, she exactly. clearly they, just they... like had a reaction and thought, oh, that's the guy. Of course, like you see someone, it's like when something takes over your brain, you see that everywhere. Sure. And maybe that's and what that happened. is clearly what happened to her, which is yeah. like, not like that's the greatest thing. Like, that's, sure. And then it's a little bit racist, but like, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't on her to figure out if that was the right guy. Like, why didn't they do DNA tests? So this is 1981 before they had DNA tests. And no, they did. They didn't have the ability to do a DNA test at this time. They did have a special like hair analysis sort of thing that they did use. Okay. And they used that analysis and determined when did DNA testing come in. Okay. Sorry. Just that was after that. So they use this like hair analysis technique to yeah. look at that pubic hair that was found and determined that it was Anthony Broadwater's. Yeah. And so she stood up in court and she, she told him, I'm hundred percent certain this is the man that raped me. Oh, not just from the one second that she saw him. She like continued. No, no, she to... had to, she was a part of this process. Now here's what's mm. strange what happened moving forward. Right. Not long after this, they put him and a bunch of other guys in a police lineup and just told her to pick out the guy that she just told him out of the police lineup. Mm -hmm. She picked the wrong guy. Oh my God. She picked the guy standing next to him. Jesus Christ, Alice. Come on. Okay, now I blame her a little bit. I'm sorry. Well, here again, it's not that simple, right? Okay. So the prosecution here is to me really where the big issue lies. Mm. They wanted a conviction. You know what happens when you get a conviction? You get promoted. <laughs> like you get. Oh, that's it, bullshit. It, it, this seemed like a very clear, easy way to get a conviction, right? Yeah. That's all they care about. Alice said she recognized this guy. And even though there might have been some doubt, everyone's trying to convince her actually that she was right. They actually lied to her. They told her that the guy that she picked out was actually friends with Broadwater. 
and they like conspired for him to like draw her attention by staring at her or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that Broadwater actually had a criminal background. None of this is true. They just made this up. This is a prosecutorial misconduct. Mm -hmm. And this hair analysis thing they did turned out to be junk science. None of this stuff was right. it's not DNA testing, right? It was yeah. just, it's not out of all of this. And that's what he was convicted on. Her eyewitness testimony, which we've learned since then, is notoriously unreliable. Yeah. And that's not totally, I mean. Yeah, and this yeah. junk science, right? And that's why this guy went to prison, even though as soon as she couldn't pick him out of the lineup, that should have, yeah. he should have been walking. Right, yeah. It's hard for us to remember faces already, but it's been shown that remembering faces of another race, another ethnicity, were even worse at it. Oh, that's a legitimate thing. I didn't realize that. Yeah, huh. people are much better recognizing and differentiating faces of their own race. Weird. Whatever race you might be, that's just been shown to be the case. Mm -hmm. And so she was convinced that this was the guy and everyone else around her helped convince her that she was right about this. Right. Now he's deemed to be innocent. So, you know, eight days after this, you know, his conviction was just overturned. She released a statement with a, an apology trying to figure out how this could happen and all this. And yeah, I mean, that's got to suck for her too. Like, yeah, they pulled a memoir oh. and the movie, of course, was shelved. Again, some people are criticizing it. Some people are saying it was good in the way she apologized, but he accepted the apology mm. very graciously, like broke down and all this stuff. Mm. It's like a very, the story is crazy. And to me, this is just so much, these are, it's injustice compounded upon injustice. Yeah, it is. It's one injustice leading to another. Yeah. And I think at the heart of this is a racist justice system, mm. because this is something that happens more frequently to, you know, to people of color. Mm. She pointed out this random black guy in the street and he went he lost 16 years plus of his life and it's so yeah and the system worked to put him away on little to no evidence and i went testimony that was already shaky so frustrating because of all the times that the system actually worked to put away a rapist like do you know how often that goes on anything like yeah there was the evidence but they couldn't they didn't get the guy or the statute of limitations was over stupid things that make it yeah. so that people don't go away and this guy did go away and he didn't even do it yeah it's such bullshit there's multiple injustices here because yeah. all these time she thought that she had gotten justice yeah and yeah. now it's like you learn and where's the guy that actually did it exactly she she even puts that in her apologies like this guy got away yeah the guy who raped her got away and maybe went on to rape other people and instead an innocent man lost his life or much of his life to this right and yeah. this is just so tragic on so many levels and you start to wonder like how did our justice system our justice system has to be so flawed for something like that to happen yeah. where both these people were let down and of course it does feel that way yeah. you know in terms of social justice yeah. the underlying racism can't be denied here mm -hmm. in the way this ended up happening Inten no, it's not like i don't think many people believe that it was intentional on alice siebel's part no of course i I can't imagine that. I, yeah. I think that would be really messed. Like she would have to be a sociopath. Yeah. And there's no, yeah. of course not. She believed slash wanted to believe whatever. Yeah. When you read her memoir now, apparently like it's, it reads very differently. I'm sure. Yeah. When she talks about how picking the wrong person out of the lineup and why that must have happened to her, knowing that yeah. this other guy was the one who did it. And the thoughts she had when he, apparently he had said that. So that line that he said that sounded similar to the other guy. Yeah. Apparently he said he was talking to someone else like by her, some friend of his. Oh, it's so understandable how that trauma could lead to that. Of course. Yeah, that makes perfect. But yeah. when you think about it, how ridiculous is it that five months later, you're walking by the guy, this random person that is the one that did it. It's almost impossible. Right. Yeah. And she painted him as like, he knew what he did. And he looked at me and he smiled. This was a black man who smiled at her in the street. And he looked at me and he smiled. And, well, it, but the thing is, it didn't align with her original statement of how this guy acted after what he did originally. He was like a tortured soul of some sort. He was saying a bunch of weird, angry things. And then he said things out of like shame and sadness. He said, sorry. And then he he said a bunch of weird stuff. He's a messed up oh. dude, whoever, the guy who did that, right? Uh, a monster. Yeah. Well, then why would she think that he would act in a way that made sense? And then the guy later sounded like he was like very with it and very happy and proud of what he did. And he was evil about it. And that didn't line with the character. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like nothing aligned with the character if he's all over the place. Maybe she was like, okay, I guess this is how he feels now. Like he's proud of it. And I mean, she was brutalizing like a dark tunnel and all this stuff. There's all these things that like you start to understand how maybe she didn't see things the way she thought she did, but why there was still a clear picture for her. You know, the way memory often works is we don't, 
it's not like a hard drive where we just like dip in and take out the file. We're recreating memory as we mm. look back on things. And that right. gets repainted kind of differently, depending on context, depending on bias, all sorts of things, right? Right. Oh, well, it's clearly on the system. Yeah. And I think that it comes down to just, again, this injustice here to me. I mean, the injustice, obviously what happened and there's injustices in the world that happen all the time, but the injustice and in how we didn't succeed at finding justice. In fact, we made it worse. Yeah. That to me is something that- Yeah. I mean, that's where the fight still lies and being able to find, right. was it equity? Yeah. <laughs> or fairness, some form of fairness in a very unfair world. Yeah. Well, you uh, you definitely haven't helped me think that the Sorry. world is more just <laughs> in this episode. Um, but that's We okay. started no. it with you saying the world is unjust and me going, sometimes it's just, and then went on to- <laughs> And then listing all the ways it's unjust. I do point no, out there was- that's a- not true. You did counterpoint a few different- yeah, No, no. And, you, you, I mean, I guess- some small little bit of justice there is he did now get his conviction overturned. Although the state's not giving him a dime for the wrongful conviction. There's some rule in there or something. And he he's not getting money for this. Broadwater. It's absolutely ridiculous to me. I mean, people are raising stuff for him and whatever, but mm-hmm. you know, yeah, that's, that's pretty messed up. Very unjust. Very unjust. Yeah. I also had something about Supreme court justices written down here, but I think we should save that for another time. Oh, it was yeah. be a very long episode. We've been talking for a bit, huh? We sure have, but that's okay. There's always more to talk about. So save it for, for next another time. time for another time. Yeah. This has been another episode of adulthood friends. Thank you for listening. And if you want to listen more, we're basically everywhere you'd like to listen. Probably most likely anchor is what we use mainly. So if you want to find the RSS and plug it into whatever podcast listening app you use, Or just look us up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, and any other cast. All the casts. All the casts and the pods. We're also on Facebook. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we should follow us on Facebook if you can. And you'll see all the notifications. Mm -hmm. Like us. Like our page. If you like us, like us. If you don't like us, then don't. Yeah, like us if you like us. Yeah, like us if you like us. And like I've said a few times, if you've listened to the end of the episode and you don't like us, I think you should question how you spend (laughs) your time. Thanks for listening. listening. I really hope I didn't like, I'll be honest, I was afraid a little bit going into this episode that I was going to say stuff that might upset people. We're dealing with very sensitive subject matter. Oh, it's okay. I apologize if I said anything, uh, you know, offensive or I'm sorry if I offended you, Aya. I accept your apology. (laughs) Sorry if maybe I have some beliefs that you don't agree with. And I'm always open to discuss and talk about things. And please feel free. You love discussing things. That's true. Josh really does love discussing things, especially if he disagrees with you. I mean, I think communication is our only way through a lot of our problems. That's lovely. I hope if somebody does have an issue, they can feel free to communicate and, Mm -hmm. you know, we can empathize with each other and all that stuff. But I don't know. I feel like you and I, I think, agree on most important things. Where have you gotten that idea? I don't know this podcast. That's completely untrue. <laughs> yeah. I don't even agree with that statement. So, I don't know. except for this statement. How do we usually end this thing, Josh? Um, I think one of us is talking, and then out of nowhere, the music just. Justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, Martin Luther King. That's a good quote. Is that a good quote to end on? Yeah, that's a good quote there. True peace is not merely the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. Also Martin Luther King. If you want to learn about justice, read some Martin Luther King. The moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Do you know who that is? Is that Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Nope, still Martin Luther King. But there is, I see Ginsburg here. (laughs) (laughs) I knew that actually, I knew that. Oh, RBG. How we miss you.